but I don't know, I might get it from my mum, but it's really interesting that it says in my profile too, that creativity side, and I'm like you, it's, it's real practical things. It's not that fine art. I, it's not, that's not what I do, but um, yeah, that's really cool. Do you sound what number is Angela? One, two, five, I believe. Oh, right in the middle. I believe, yes. let me just double check. Number I would five. get a little bit of Ecto in there. I mean, such a typical diplomat. I'm so sorry. It's okay. We were just having a little chat. Five points. One, two, five. But, uh, but Anne is telling me that I'm at least 40% uh, um, Diplo. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's... um. And when I was a diplomat, they told me I was a 210L. Two, oh, no, that's right. I remember having this discussion before because there is that crossover with the 125 um, activator. Because I had a... Oh, I don't know what number she is. I couldn't check now. She could be a 210 and she came up as a 125. And just by looking at her, I was like, and knowing her briefly, it's my best friend's sister. I was like, there is no way this girl is a one, two, five activator. Like she just isn't. So I sent off her photos immediately to support and she went back as a, I'm pretty sure it was a 210. So there's a lot of crossover with those from mm. what I gather, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I have to, I might ask, I might ask Cam. I don't know um, what the L was, but. Yeah. Oh, that's just, um, it stands, it's the old school way of identifying body types. So it stands for lymphatic. So that means that lymph drainage and retaining water is one of the, um, one of the things that will bother the diplomat. So the L stands for lymphatic. Um, yeah. So how did you go with your exercise over the past week? Oh, pretty good. And, and today I, I'm on the 12th floor um, yeah. and my apartment goes through the front and the back. The front, I spend a lot of time in the front. I have a beautiful balcony and lots of sun. View of the Andes Mountains and all of this. I take my tea, I have my garden out there, my herb garden everything you know beautiful and, and the back is uh this is my um office out back which is also the mountains and oh beautiful wow that's amazing yeah. it's lovely so but anyway it's 12 feet up and there's you know i don't often and there's no back out and look down in the window but for whatever reason, today there was a breeze coming in and I wanted the breeze. So I got up and I stood by that window and I looked down and I saw the yard. I've been in a million times, but not since lockdown. And, there, and it's not a yard yard. Uh, it's all programmed. You know, there's a, a, an in indoor a steam room and, and they're both closed and a social room and that's closed. And there's an outdoor place, an outdoor jacuzzi and that's closed. And it's, a, um, there's, a, there's an AstroTurf place with hat, which has uh, some little jungle gym stuff for kids mm -hmm. that has some platforms on it um, that's closed. And there's an area that's for little kids to play soccer, it's, it's not, even half a soccer field, but it's this little enclosed area and it's flat. And uh, that's what I was looking right down. And I was really ticked because they don't open our roof for walking. And I mm -hmm. look at and I see people walking on their roofs, you know, because mm -hmm. theirs are open and we can't go out. So I looked down there and I thought, I can walk around that soccer. Yeah, great. It's court, it's not really a field. Yeah. And, uh, and so today, I just, I didn't ask. I just put my shoes on and I went down to the second floor and I went up there. And I did, uh, I did some of my stretches and stuff in the sunshine. And okay. I, and then I walked and I walked for 15 minutes and I walked like, yeah, this. And then I did jumping jacks and, and okay. some of the, the skater stuff and whatever. And yeah. then I, and then I went over to the jacuzzi 
And I went, and there were only six stairs. And I went up and down, up and down, about 50 times, the mm -hmm. stairs. And then I walked over to the little kid's place, which had a little curb that was only, oh, six inches around the swing part. And I'm having trouble jumping. And one of the things that I noticed in one of the, one of the videos, it told me to, to skate. And then later in the video, jump up on one stair and jump up. I, and I couldn't jump. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I couldn't believe myself. I mean, I could jump like a jumping jack, but I couldn't just take both feet and mm -hmm. jump. Jumping just on the flat floor. Mm -hmm. And so today I saw that little curb and I thought, I wonder, you know, and I put my hands on the, on the side of the equipment and I, and I didn't do so good for the first two or three jumps. And then I, and then I just kept doing it and doing it. And I got, so I could do it. And, and yeah. I thought, man, every day I'm going to be down here maybe twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Twice is perfect if there's short bouts. And if you struggle to jump up, just step up and jump down. Mm -hmm. um, and then work up to it. But it's great you're using something to hold on to. That's good. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I'm walking up and down those six stairs, and they're pretty high stairs. They're probably 10-inch stairs. Yeah. And I thought, I should try to jump this. And no, I should not try to jump this. <laughs> <laughs> build up, build up, slowly get there. Activate a life. But you could okay. maybe even put in some um, push-ups and some dips. Oh, I've been doing some uh, squats. And, right. some, and what do you call those? Uh, I call them skier squats. Against a, against a wall, or you just, like a chair? Wall oh, yeah, yeah, like a static static squat, yeah. Yeah, squat. That, yeah, that I used to always do in September, getting ready for ski season. And, uh, and I'm doing that two minutes, twice a day. Awesome. And, um, and then I'm doing, uh, Sharna gave me some exercises, some little videos, um, I don't know, a month or so ago. I'm doing one or two of those. Great. Some of, are, some of them are hard for me, so I try to do the ones that are hard for me. Good. Just, just do fewer reps. Look at you and, stepping into all this challenging yourself stuff. Like this oh, is I incredible. It. it is perfect. It's excellent. Exactly what you should be doing. And do you feel really good then? Yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Although uh, two days ago I had an anxiety attack and it lasted a about 40 hours I think you know I didn't I didn't sleep all night I ended up getting up at four in the morning and watching webinars and the next day I just I took a 30 minute rest at 11 and a 40 minute rest at five mm -hmm. and I went to bed at 10 and I slept seven and a half hours yeah good and did you chat to Anne about that I did cool awesome yeah that's really helpful that she's Effie. Yeah, and um, yeah, I just, uh, it, was, it was just a combination of things over three or four days. I had a stress and then I had another stress and then I had a bigger stress and then I had another stress. And then they announced, um, you know, the lockdown for uh, what's going to be lifted uh, this week and I, and I, for some people, and I, got my, my wonderful housekeeper to come. And she was coming on Friday, I think it was, Thursday or Friday. Anyway, uh, it was Thursday, because it was Thursday night, I had the anxiety attack. And uh, she didn't come, and for an hour she didn't come, and for two hours she didn't come. I thought, what the heck? And I went in and I looked at my, looked at my email. She had sent me an email, the police stopped her uh, she didn't have the right number on her cedula. Only certain numbers could go out on certain days, and they would not let her ride the metro to get to my house. And uh, and I just I was like, God, yeah. You know? And and I was so excited the whole two days before that. It's like, oh my God, I haven't my, my floors and my shower. I mean, I can't clean those things I mean I've been doing the tops of stuff you know yeah. sanitizing the doorknobs and stuff but 
I can't, I can't ring them up and I can't, you know, I have a broken back and, mm. da, 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 you know, plus I'm old and whatever. And, you know, I don't like to say I can't, but, and I work with her when she's here, but yeah, but my floors and my shower had not been cle cleaned well mm. for over six weeks. And I was yeah, so yeah. excited she was coming, you know, and then yeah. she couldn't come. Yeah. You know, so now she's coming next Friday, which is the proper day for her mm -hmm. number, and whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And they're, and they're letting um, they're letting a lot of people, a lot of companies uh, go back to work, at least like fifty percent with certain protocols um, next Friday, but not the elderly. No, we have we have to stay locked down for five more weeks and. Um, uh, the uh, the release is only age 16 to age 60. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid what they're going to do when they release everybody else is tell us we don't even have any days out. Yeah. yeah. And that's just going to drive me mm. insane. Yeah. But I tell you, you saw my lunch I had, my, my virtual lunch I had with my friend. Yeah, beautiful. And that was, did you see that, Sharna? No, I haven't. Where is that? Is that in the um, WhatsApp? Uh -oh. a, picture, a picture on the, yeah. No, it's you must have sent it directly to Sage. Yeah, you might have. I can't remember now. I can show, I can show Sharna. And, and, um, and I just, I've been doing lots of Zooming with my friends. And I have a once a month meeting with all the, 10 women that I went to Greece with last, um, last June. That's we've amazing. Been, we've been meeting once a month. Yeah, I set that up. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm doing everything, but I'm, uh, it's getting, it's getting really tight for me. I, I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. emotional, you know, I just, I mean, my tango. It's not just I want a tango. I mean, my tango was everything in my life, you know. It was my, it was my cardio three times a week, and it was my social, and it was my hugs, it was my physical, yeah. and it's gone. It's just mm -hmm. gone. And yeah. I, you know, and it's been six weeks, and. You know, I've, I've adopted a family, a Colombian family. I buy them groceries and I take them there and I talk to them 10 minutes every week, you know. And, and you know, and I'm working so hard in my, in my Toastmasters and I'm mentoring some of the, mm -hmm. some of the people. And, you know, I'm just trying to do a lot of service. I'm trying to be grateful for everything. I love my apartment. I love the sunshine. I love Medellin. I love everything, but I, yeah. I'm still alone. I'm just yeah. still yeah. alone. And you're doing all the right things. And it's totally understandable that at times you just have days where you just, you're not okay. And that's okay. Yeah, my God is overall better you know, it has good days and bad days but it's really overall better but in that um in that id program i lost five pounds and and that worried me and you know i'm still down one one and a half i'm still down i'm up one and a half pounds so i'm yeah. down three, still down three and a half pounds and yeah you know but i'm being careful and good about my food and and yeah. Anne's, Anne's trying to find me uh, uh, one of the, what do you call them, the medical or medical coaches or whatever, the, the nature paths and mm -hmm. the medically trained coaches, you know? And oh, yeah, she, yep. Of course, Shireen. What's that? Shireen's a naturopath, nutritionalist, herbalist and everything. Well, I don't know what the problem is. Anna's been looking for like three weeks. And I said, isn't there just a list? Yeah. <laughs> and she gave me a name uh, last week. She gave me a name, I don't know, on Wednesday or Thursday. And she sent me a, a little, um, you know, share the contact thing with this man's name and phone number or email or something. Anyway, it was a clinic. 
And, and I looked into it and um, I couldn't get to him. He owned the clinic, but everything he does, he does in groups. It didn't mention pH 360. It didn't mention Ayurveda. It didn't mention uh, DOM. It didn't, it didn't, he was, a, he was, he had a bachelor's and master's degree in uh, phys ed and education administration, and he was a naturopathic doctor. And I, you know, and I wrote back to her and I said, I can't get to this guy. He doesn't offer a 15 minute consult. You know, I can't ask him any questions. Uh, his, his first consult is 20 minutes. It costs $65 and he's in the US and uh, you can bring one complaint to the consult. And it's oh. like, this is not page 360. This no, is it doesn't sound like it. But I mean, on the, it sounds positive that you're actually gaining the weight back. Was the, and it, it, so that's still the positive. Yes, I, 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 because I'm eating a, a little more protein. I'm trying yeah. not to, you know, I, I'm doing uh, sardines and salmon and chicken. It's mm, probably about it for protein. Well, uh, I'm, I did uh, some tuna fish and a couple of eggs last week, once, eggs once a week. Chicken only twice a week. Yeah. You know, you know I'm trying to, I mean, I'm yeah. not, you know. Is that in your profile that it's twice a week for chicken? I think so. Okay. Good, it's good. Chicken yeah. broth is excellent. Oh, uh, so it could be if it's cooked, if it's slow cooked, maybe mm. it's better. It's well digested. Yeah. Mm. So it could be a good idea for you to do some slow cooking just to help you to break down the protein a little bit more. I have a convection oven that has steam and I do almost everything with convection steam. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It, That's so lucky. Those things are in, oh my gosh. What yeah. are they? I oh, bought like a reverse cycle oven that you can steam and roast in and they are like you can air fry you can roast you oh, can wow. you do, like they are incredible big kitchens have got the massive ones for what we do in a big industrial kitchen but if you've got a small I, I've got one like a microwave size like a microwave in fact in fact it was Dr. Hyman I don't know if you've heard of him and he's talking all over the world <laughs> these days anyway he's somebody I've been following for about six years and uh He's really into food. He's an MD, but he's really into food. And um, he was saying about a year and a half ago, you know, microwaves bad, 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 bad microwaves. You know, now they're kind of lessening that a little bit. But anyway, he was saying bad, bad. You know, if you can afford it at all, go and get a convection steam oven. And I went right down the next day. I was here in that room. <laughs> right down the next day to Papagane and I, and I said, do you have this? And they had two of them right there. They were By the way, you're so action orientated. You're always just like, that makes sense. I do. <laughs> and I love, yeah. I just want to touch on, you know, before you, you mentioned, you've got a lot of emotions about being trapped inside and whatnot, but the beautiful thing was that you opened this conversation about how you're, you found these natural ways to rebel, rebel the system and find a loophole that has enabled you to express yourself and achieve these things. And even though I know there's things that are inside of our control and outside of our control, and you've managed to find a really glorious loophole that's actually inside of your control that actually gave you, you lit up when you were talking about that. Um, so I really want you to focus in on that at the fact of that sometimes there's a lot of things out of our control and there can be a whole host of our, our energy, our mind, our emotions that we can embed in the expectation of things that are outside of our control that are completely wasted. But the one thing we can do is come back and focus on what is inside of my control. And you looking out your window and rebelling and going, I'm going to get out on that thing. I'm going to do my stuff. That's exactly what you can control right now and exactly what you can do right now. And I think everything else 
needs to be let go of in some way. And if that's you rebelling more and doing more of these naughty little exercises and jumping and learning these things, focus on that. Your every bit of your energy needs to be, how can I rebel in those ways? Because that will give you back that freedom that you're seeking because there's all this stuff that you cannot control that is going to happen with or without your emotions being entangled in them. So come back to self, come back into one of the, what's the cool rebellious things that you can be doing. And it sounds to me like you're contributing in incredible ways. Your heart is so much out there right now. And just, you've got to stick with it because it will come back to you eventually. Sometimes it just won't come back in the way that we expect them to come back to us. And it sounds to me like you're already being given some beautiful gifts and reminders that you are doing such wonderful contribution to the people around you, but also to yourself. And just relish in that for a moment. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you very much. Well, uh, last Thursday, I, I did a little rebel, rebel. I didn't, I don't think of them as rebels. Uh, you know, I, I kind of think of them as going around the backside <laughs> of the <mother> bush. <laughs> very diplomatic of you. It didn't say it didn't say we couldn't. <laughs> Very activator, actually. You twist it to fit into the rule that you want it to be. <laughs> like, I actually want it to mean this. Yeah. It's gonna well, go we, around. We that. have something here called picoy cedula, and that's Spanish. Uh, the cedula is, is our national ID, like our social security number. You know, everybody's got a number, and that's their cedula number. So. What they did about four weeks ago was they said you can go out on certain days depending on your cedula number. If you're the last digit of your cedula number is zero, one, and two, you can go out on Monday. If it's three, four, five, you can go out on Tuesday. If it's six, you know, like that. And uh, and so I called my friend uh, who drives for me and takes me to appointments and all that kind of stuff, but hasn't been able to do that for the last five weeks. And I said, Paula, what's your, what's your Pico Cedula number? You know, what day do you get to go out? And she said, Thursday. And I said, ah, me too, me too. You can come pick me up in your car and we can go out in our car. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't have any money. She and her family of, of four, two kids and husband, all went out to their farm when we locked down. Um, and um, they've been borrowing money to get food and stuff because they run a bus company and the city closed down their buses and they had zero income. You know, so I said, come in, I'll hire you for the whole day so I can give you some money and I'll pay you for, I'll pay you for eight hours. You know, I want to go here. I want to go to Las Palmas. I want to go. Do you think we can go to Las Palmas? That's on the road to the airport. I heard they were stopping people on the road to the airport. Oh no, I think we can go to Las Palmas. Okay. Well then I want to go to Costco and I want to go here and I want to go here and I want to go here. And we were out <laughs> for six and a half hours and I was just so excited, <laughs> so excited. And I came home and I had all these packages and things and just I mean it was it was wonderful and I bought her lunch and I gave her money and that was wonderful too and and everything well so then the next day I was supposed to get uh, my person in but um, but one of the things that Paula but she didn't come but one of the things that Paula told me was there the mayor just announced that day Thursday that uh, everybody can go out walking for one hour. Mm -hmm. And I said, seven days a week? And she said, yeah. She said, but he made it from two to three in the afternoon. Well, this is tropical climate. He says, it's so, she said, it's so hot there. Who wants to go out at two or three? I said, I do, I do, I do, you know? <laughs> and she said, well, it's only for those between 18 and 60. And I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna put on my, my really jazzy purple running suit and my sunglasses and my mask and I'm yeah. gonna go out and they're gonna think I'm 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knock it out. Yeah. <laughs> and I, but I didn't do it because that was right after my housekeeper told me that the police stopped her and checked her cedula. And I thought, 
you know, and, and we have, if they want to, I, have, I don't know that they've done this very much, but if they want to, we have a fine mm. of um, a million pesos. A million pesos is about $350 US. Yeah. If you're out when you're not supposed to be out. Because when we first locked down, they did not want people gathering and out and this and that. And now when you go and in, go into grocery stores or whatever, you know, only one person per family, you can't take your husband or your kid with you or, you know, I mean, because everybody's got to be social distance and, da, 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 you know, and so when she told me the police stopped her to get, wouldn't let her get on the Metro, I thought, I don't want to fine and I don't, you know, and I, you know, if they, I, I, so I didn't do it. But then today, that's why I was doubly happy to see this little yard down. Yeah. Down. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so this has been my, you know, and it was it's stress and then, and then something else and then stress and then something else. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. So, but I'm, but you know, I, my self talk is good. You know, I keep telling myself I'm doing well. And, you know, and when I get excited, I notice I'm getting excited and I, and I pinpoint why I'm getting excited. And, and when I'm not, I do something, you know, I call mm. somebody or I make an appointment or, I, you know, I do something. And, um, and then Thursday night, that anxiety just, I mean, within 10 minutes, that was, it was sort of like, I just got big fatigue. And then within 10 minutes, I was just nervous and, and, and anxious. And, you know, I was just, my nerves were shot. And, yeah. And it lasted all night and the next day. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's totally to be expected. I mean, these are we've never had this experience before so there's going to be times when you don't cope but you just ride the wave and now you're on the other side and you pick yourself up and that's testament to you and <laughs> you, can, you can keep moving ahead yeah we've got 10 minutes left guys i think zoom is playing up for some reason it's not recognizing that i have oh yeah normal. it's strange isn't it um, it's been playing up today it wouldn't connect a lot of things so just letting you know we've got nine minutes oh. left oh my gosh okay well i wanted to do last week's uh genius and this week's mind <laughs> yeah well, we, it's okay if we don't have time to go through all of it um we've got thursday as well yeah well, we can recap on thursday what we don't get through but i don't know if shana can share her screen and we'll quickly go through the genius section well if if it flips off is it going to flip off as 40 minutes Okay, well, if you want, you can, you know, you can come right back on. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we can. Um, yeah, we can. We can easily do that. Um, so okay. with activators, even though genius is the last on our list of things that are important, um, it doesn't mean it's not important to us. It means that there's a whole lot of other things that... Um, we need to have in place before we kind of look at our career options. You're doing those things. So you're working on your food and your exercise and your social um, interactions, but obviously your work is related to your, to your social interactions. So that's really great. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll just go through your, your statements a little bit and you can reflect on them or there can be things where you can say um, yeah actually I could work on that so we'll go through them and you can see which ones resonate with you um, so the first one a lot of us have this one I might feel pressure to achieve a desired status as a result I may persevere until I find work that is meaningful to me would you say this is true for you Uh, well, you know, I'm out of the work world, so... Less for argument's sake, say Toastmasters was going to be, we'll quantify that as work at this 
for argument's sake. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I find, I find things to do that are meaningful to me. Yeah. I don't want to do something to be doing something. It needs yeah. to have it needs to yeah. have meaning. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I may enjoy communicating, guiding others and persuading people. I have this one. This might allow me to excel in sales, teaching workshops or training or doing any job that allows me to relate to people. So this one is definitely you in Toastmasters. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and what does that make you experience? So how do you feel because you're, you're able to do that? Well, I get kind of um, two-sided uh, stuff coming at me because another, which I'm coming to understand is an activator trait that, that I've known about me for most of my life is that I put people off because I'm so gregarious and, I, and I, my standards are high and, you know, I, I, well, and not really run around correcting things. I used to run around correcting things, but, you know, I mean, people, I, I put people off sometimes. I think that's in mine as well. It says that I can be imposing on people's, um, like on their personal space and, and actually impose on them because of the enthusiasm. Um, so I think yep. that could be mine as well. And I think uh, something that I, in fact, I have this little phrase on my, on the back of, of my name tech plate for years with the Forest Service, to be great is to be misunderstood. Um, <laughs> Which, which is, of course, is is from Les, Les Miserables, which I read in the twelfth grade or something like I that. I but... read that too in my high school years. <laughs> yeah. okay. and, and I always thought, and I always thought that I wasn't different. I was just misunderstood. Well, the thing that comes with awareness, so we can go, oh, I, I put people off because of having enthusiastic rah, rah, rah. but it's like oh what a beautiful thing to be like so mm. enthusiastic that you can barely contain yourself and the thing about awareness is you can go all right I know my enthusiasm can appear imposing so I'll I'll make sure that I take cues from the people around me I'll stop and pay attention to what cues I'm receiving from them and so what is actually a really beautiful trait yes it can have a flip side but with awareness we can kind of coach ourselves through that yeah, I think too that because I am direct mm -hmm. and because I am knowledgeable, I mean, I don't speak unless I know what I'm speaking about. Yeah. Yeah. And because I'm strong and because I'm accomplished, you know, people think that I'm telling them what to do. When I yeah. give them an example of something, that could be, they think I'm telling, telling them what to do. I just had a guy in Toastmasters the other day say, I don't remember that conversation and I don't remember agreeing to do that. And you know, and it's like, that's exactly what you did agree to do. I'm just repeating what you said. And you know. so with that awareness, you've just um, communicated to us all these beautiful traits that you inhibit. With the awareness of how it might come across, is there any ways that you could adjust, say, even just your communication style? I don't know. I, that's my question to you. <laughs> well, I mean, do you think you could? Well, I certainly would be willing to. If I mean, these come around and hit me in the back of the head, like this guy. You know? We had this nice conversation, four of us, on Zoom at the end of the meeting the other night. You know, four of us stayed after and talked about this. And he said, "Yeah, I'll do that." And yeah, I'll do that. You know. So I wrote him a little thing and thank you, Louise, for saying we'll do this. And so, you know, uh, did you send this to Arturo and let it? And then he and then he says, I don't remember that conversation and I don't remember agreeing to do that and I'm not gonna do that. And it's yep. like 
Ha, is he an activator? <laughs> so what do you think you could do? Because essentially you'll be going into a role where you're managing people. So what do you think you could do in those situations to either avoid that or how do you think you could work through that? We've got less than one minute. So mm. if we cut off, we can... Come back in. Yeah. Well, what I did was I sent him a voicemail. I mean, obviously I can't meet with him. I had sent him a voice message and it was a real light message. And I said, and I kind of chuckled and I said, golly, Louise, you know, I can't believe you don't remember that conversation. Remember, you said that you were doing this and this. And, and, and we said, wow, that's great, Louise. That's so important. Can you can you um, just send send that in written form and oops are you gone no um, is it okay I heard the bell or something I uh, don't know what that was keep going so anyway but he never answered me he never answered me and I uh, think and th this is this is an example for you guys about some of the communication stuff that happens, but this particular communication, I'm not concerned about because this guy had done something and got his finger slapped uh, and um, by the president. And I think he was just saying, yeah, but y'all, you know, but anyway, I know that all my life, People have said, well, she she's, thinks she's a smarty pants or she, you know, she was teacher's pet, you know, in school or she was. Uh